Hello, this is Eric of Not BIOS, and today I'm going to show you two different things. I'm going to show you how to update your BIOS, and then the five second reset, how it works, and do it right here so you can see my BIOS is actually reset after. I'm going to actually overclock my CPU to a point where it cannot work whatsoever. It'll just crash and be a blank screen. And guess what? You'll see this works and how to do it. But first, Let's see the easy way to update your BIOS through BIOS Flash Pack. The first thing you'll end up needing is a thumb drive, USB thumb drive for storing files. It doesn't matter if it's empty or not, it still works. Okay, to start off here, we'll want to go to our favorite browser. I'm going to use Google Chrome, and the easiest way to follow along is using Google Chrome as well. I'm going to go to MSI's website for the MPG B550i Gaming Edge. Click support and I'm going to put a link below in my description of this exact link for MSI and you'll want to have at least the BIOS version 12 which is actually version 1.2 release date August 10th 2020 or newer. If you're got a newer version you're good to go because you'll need this in order to do that 5 second BIOS reset with the power button. Anyways we now want to download. And it says it uses cookies to optimize functionality. You'll have to accept or else you can't download the file. Okay, so I'm have to click it again. And now it's showing up here, downloading. And once it's downloading, the easiest thing to do is show in folder. So you're going to click this little arrow here. Open when done. Always open the file type. Pause. I always use show in folder. So I can see it in the folder here now. And I find the easiest way to deal with this is simply put it to desktop. So I press cut. You can click desktop or you can simply click down here in windows and go to your desktop and paste. Now this folder here you can see a zipper here that means it's zipped. So right click your mouse and when you right click you can see this menu here and you go to extract all. In my case I just leave this on the desktop just like it is now. If it's not on desktop just browse to your desktop and click on desktop select folder and press extract. Here it is extracted in the folder. I'm going to drag this over here. Get rid of this zip folder. We don't need that anymore. And now open this. And we can see there's a text document here. We don't need that. That's just simply the updates. Let's delete that. Get rid of that out of the way so we don't copy a folder we don't need, a file we don't need. We have remaining is this E7C92AMS.120. You want to get rid of this whole entire name, including the 120. So select it all and get rid of it all. And now you're going to name it MSI.ROM. MSI.ROM. And now you're going to click off this part here and onto, say, a folder just off the side or somewhere. So now we'll say, if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? You'll select yes. Another reason you want this BIOS is if you uh, have the older BIOS and you happen to offset your voltage for your CPU, you'll get an extremely high voltage and that is extremely dangerous to the long-term usability and for temperatures of your CPU. Okay, now what you want is the thumb drive, which I showed earlier, into your computer. And one sweet thing about this is thumb drive doesn't have to be empty. You see there's a bunch of files here. That's all fine and good. So I can close this off. I'm going to right click this file here again. Select it. Whoops, the file itself. And now I'm going to go to send to. I want to send to my Lex R drive right here. And I'll click that. And now it's going to send it there. Okay. Now we can actually stick the drive into the correct slot and start the update process. You'll see this gray box right here. That is where you're going to slot your USB drive into that gray slot. And then you see that BIOS flash button. You're next going to press that. Okay, to make this easy for you. I don't have my IO shield on. I took it off. I never put it back on yet. So right beside the PS2 port should be that one that that white rectangle. Stick your USB flash drive in there. Once your computer is off, in my case, I want to take this out because I don't want to flash on BIOS again because I don't want to have to restart and redo from scratch. So in my case, I'm going to take this out because I just want to show you how this works. This would actually be where your flash, BIOS 
flashback button is. It says BIOS flash. You press this button. And when you press it, you're going to see a red light. So let's get this showing here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, so I'm going to turn off the light. This light here, when the BIOS is fully updated, this red light will turn off completely. It'll be flashing while it's updating. Don't turn off a computer till it's done. So now let's say our BIOS updating is actually done and the light turned off. It takes about two minutes or so to update the BIOS. Do not ever power out off. Do not ever take this out till it's completely done or else your computer won't work until you fix it correctly. Now, let's see about this BIOS reset thing. Okay, I'm gonna set the camera back so I can get more view of the screen and the power button at the same time. So let's say now we have the BIOS updated. It might say press F1 to continue, which if you do so, then you can continue on to Windows after your BIOS is updated, or it might just go right to this screen. That's your normal home screen, no problem at all. Now, I'm gonna to go to the point where I'm gonna crash the computer. It's just not gonna work at all. So I'm gonna go into the BIOS here. So I'm going to click my little stirp button and go to shut down. So from the BIOS, I'm going to do all these settings here. I'm going to turn on the power. And depending on the computer, it might be press F1 to go to setup. Well, in this case, it's going to be delete. That says F1 is an option as well. So we went to delete here. Now we're in the BIOS menu. In my BIOS menu, you're going to be, I think, probably on this screen normally. I don't deal with that one. I want to go to advanced settings. I want to change this clock ratio so high this will not work. I'm going to go right into that red because I know the computer's not going to work. And that's the whole point of this. What if you did something stupid like set to. 6,490 6, megahertz. Once I save this, this computer is going to be completely toast as in it's not going to work. So now I'm going to save this setting, which is a complete fail. Now the computer is going to try to reboot. It's just not going to do it. It's going to be blank. It's dead. And just to show you, it's actually on. You can see the computer has power on it. I'm going to power this off, hold it for five seconds just to power it off. Now I'm going to press the power button again. It's dead. Let's ensure it's dead. Still waiting for nothing to happen. This is what happens when you overclock too high. It's just a real pain in the butt. That's where you may hear um, about you have to take this off, your, your plate off here so you can access your I.O. So you can get to your battery, so you can do the jumper. But the MSI, they actually implemented at least something in the 1.2 BIOS, maybe the older one as well, but the 1.2, I know it works with because this is what I tried. So right now you can see it's not doing anything, completely dead. I'm gonna power it off again takes five seconds or you can unplug it whatever the case is now while it's powered off I want to hold this button for five seconds fans will turn on momentarily keep on holding it for full five seconds one two three four five now the computer can take a while to boot up because what the computer has to do now, it has to train to understand how to boot the CPU. And then later on, you're going to see the menu that says press F1. Um, it says the BIOS is reset. Here is a neat BIOS jumper mod made by Deken Guru. So here's the motherboard with the faceplate on. Then with it removed, you can see the jumper is exposed right here. And then he adds this here. And then he has a button right up here. He attaches to it. To put it in his case just like so. This is on SFF network. 
Waiting for the CPU. Let's see the power on yet. Let's press it one more time. Okay. So now that's going to take a little while to actually learn how to reboot itself. What else can I show you? Oh, the person originally told me how to do this. Here's their comment. Oh, so right now the computer seems like it's running, but it kind of is, but it's still trying to learn how to boot up. On my game, the Ultra Experience, I'm not sure what I call it, the Ultra PC Experience, I believe that's going to be naming it. On this video, I'm going to learn how to teach you how to tune your computer for the ultimate experience. So that'll be totally about overclock. It's going to be about getting the best speed and smoothness without using a bunch of power from your computer. I call it the ultimate experience in terms of there's different components you can get that have different tuning, how to tune your RAM for ultimate speed and everything else. Right now you can see the computer's booting. And there's some people that say this five second thing doesn't work. I never pressed the other button, it's just the power button. So it does work. Press F1 to enter setup. So in terms of my keyboard, MX keys keyboard, I have to hold down the function key and press F1 to get F1. And now I'm in the BIOS. So here's a quick preview of what getting the ultimate PC experience will be about. As you can see, my DDR speed is actually 3600 RAM, by the way, but it's running at 2400 megahertz. Maybe your computer is showing 2133, but your RAM you bought is, well, it's made to run at higher speeds. Through the BIOS settings, you can choose an XMP profile. Sometimes you'll have one or two. Of course, most of the time your XMP profile one will be your fastest one, while the other one will give you an alternate speed. So what I want to do is, of course, choose my XMP profile. That will give me faster RAM speed. However, you can go beyond XMP profiles. But you know what? We can get more speed than that. Lower voltage, lower temperature, get more speed and lower temps? Heck yeah. It's not just about your computer, it's also about other things. Maybe you have a stuttering mouse or keyboard that doesn't respond quite nicely and you're wondering what's going on. I got a new mouse or new keyboard and I'm pulling my hair out, not able to get my ultimate speed and well, smoothness. But maybe, just an example, you have Wi-Fi antennas and your mouse is connected near it. Guess what? 2.4 gigahertz, your wireless mouse may also be or device, maybe 2.4 gigahertz. So what you want to do is separate it. Also coming soon, Vessi Shoes, my review, the true not BIOS review where you learn about the good, the bad, these advertisements, Vessi Shoes is it really the thing to get. Well, find out soon. Until then, have yourselves a wonderful day. This is not BIOS, Tech and Hardware.